Today I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Photoshop if you're a beginner and how to enable a cool feature within Photoshop called Camera Raw. And this sort of acts like a mini Lightroom application within Photoshop. You're first going to open Photoshop and at the top menu bar select Photoshop, go down to Preferences, and then select Camera Raw at the very bottom. Under JPEG and TIFF handling, you're going to select automatically open all supported JPEGs. Now you're going to open your photos, preferably from your memory card, and you need them to be at least 300 PPI. You'll notice that the Camera Raw window opens automatically. This Camera Raw window is basically what acts as your mini Lightroom. On the left hand side you have your film strip where you can scroll down and select each photo. As you can see, I've already made edits that are automatically saved. On the right hand side toolbar, under basic, you're gonna see all the edits that I've already made with temperature and tint, exposure, contrast, shadows, etc. But I'm gonna revert this back to the original straight out of the camera shot. The first thing I'm going to do is straighten my photo. So at the top toolbar, I'm gonna to select the transform tool. This will allow me to straighten my picture. I always select auto. This usually is a good bet for getting a really accurate straightening. Then I'm gonna go back to my hand tool so I can get back to my basic toolbar on the right hand side and I'm going to select Lens Corrections. And I need to enable Profile Corrections and then I'm gonna select my Camera Make. Automatically, I notice that my lens shows up in the drop-down menu, but you can select whatever lens that you're using if that doesn't match up. Then I wanna find the right white balance. So I select the Dropper tool on the top toolbar and I select an area on the photo that is white but in a shadow. Next, I'm gonna fix the details and sharpening. Under sharpening, I always boost the amount of sharpening I have for the photo to between 50 and 60, and then I move my radius down because I want those sharpening edits to be applied to a smaller radius so it's more fine-tuned. Next, I'm going to adjust my masking. I can hold down the Option key and slide that mask forward and backward until I get the right look I want. The idea with the masking is that it controls where those sharpening edits are applied. Next, I'm going to go and boost my basic edits. I'm going to adjust exposure, contrast, clarity, vibrance, etc. Next, I'm going to use the brush tool to fine tune some areas of the photo. So at the top toolbar, I'm going to select the brush tool. And on the right hand side will appear a new menu bar that's specific to that brush. The first thing I notice is that the headboard is looking a little magenta. So I want to control that by sliding down my tint slider bar to more green and then painting over the headboard. Once I have that to my liking, then I want to boost exposure on the side of the bed that has the most shadow. So I select a new paintbrush, slide my exposure up, adjust my contrast a little bit, and then paint that side of the bed. You can apply those same basic edits that you made to one single photo to all of your photos by selecting the first photo that you have all the edits that you liked, then holding the command key down on a Mac and selecting each photo in your film strip and then go and click on all of your basic edit options. On the right hand toolbar they will appear in the right position but in order to apply each aspect to each photo you have to actually click on the temperature, the tint, the exposure, the contrast, etc. 
so that each one of those can be applied, which is especially helpful if you have some photos that you maybe want to get the white balance to match on all of them, but you don't maybe want the exposure to be the same on all of them. So it allows you con to control which edits you want batched for all of your pictures. Once you have all of your photos edited the way you want, you're gonna select all of them by holding the command key down again on a Mac, selecting all of your pictures in your film strip and selecting open images. Now that your photos are open in Photoshop, you can make some other really cool changes that are not available in Lightroom, such as the spot healing brush tool. This is a perfect tool to use if you want to erase objects or blemishes within your photo. As you can see, I have decided I want to delete the lamp in the corner. So using small strokes, I go over it and because this brush tool is really smart, it detects everything around it and tries to match it. So once I have deleted the lamp, if I later decide I want to bring back any areas of the photo that I erased with the healing brush tool, I can use the history brush tool and just go over the areas that I have altered and it will bring those parts of the photo back to their original state. I can also make further edits on the right hand side toolbar to contrast, brightness, vibrancy, altering colors, and they will make those changes as layers. They will not alter the original. They will enhance the photo in the form of layers. The best way to export your photos for use online is to go to File, Export, and Save for Web, in parentheses, Legacy. Once you've done this, you'll see your photo appears in a window. Make sure your photo is being saved as a JPEG. Then at the bottom on the right hand side, you'll see the image size. Make sure to adjust this to the right size that'll fit best on your site. This will save my photos to wherever I want on my computer. And those photos are already ready with the right pixel size to be used online.